So as you may or may not be aware, myself, Ruhif and Conspiracy Cat have been waiting for one of the Flurf content creators to step up, nay, man up and make a prediction as to where the crosshairs will be in the auto level in relation to Blackpool Tower and the Isle of Man from Winter Hill. Sadly, after multiple requests and broken promises, neither Bev nor Brandon nor anyone on the Flat Earth side has rocked up with a prediction. However, it seems that Bev has been scouting around to try and do some sneaky auto level observations in the hope that he can make a quote unquote prediction when he will essentially have perhaps performed similar tests. Anyway, Ruhif got a hold of an image that would appear to have been taken by Bev of Blackpool. And being that Bev is all shy and alike with things like this, he decided to keep all of the metadata secret and not tell anyone where he'd been. All we had was an image. Sadly for the Bevtards and their leader Bev, we have a Ruhif on our side. Bev is going to need some lubricant after this, as not only does our Ruhif find his observation point, but well, Bev yet again proves the globe. Now I will include a link to Ruhif's channel in the description. Please go over and subscribe to his channel. It is just amazing. Now, over to you Ruhif. Take it away. Right, so this image popped up on Discord a day or two ago and I actually got a little bit excited. So I thought maybe this was the, the much anticipated Winter Hill observation that Ranty and Katz are planning. Uh, but as most of you are probably aware, uh, we're just waiting on a prominent flurf to make a prediction for where Blackpool Tower should appear through the scope. Uh, and once they've done that, they'll set off and make the observation. Uh, of course, that hasn't happened, uh, which is really weird because I thought someone like Bev with his uh, superior knowledge of both geometry and auto levels could easily make such a prediction. Uh, but alas, it has not been forthcoming. So I was actually wondering, which superhero took this photo? I did ask Bev whether it was his photo, and he was being his usual dishonest self uh, and refused to confirm or deny. Uh, but thankfully, WS chimed in and said that Bev shared it on Geo's server. So after months of Bev telling myself, Ranty and Katz how stupid we'd be to take an auto level up a hill and point it at Blackpool Tower, what does he go and do? takes an auto level up a hill and points it at Blackpool Tower. Nice one, Bev. All right, so let's do some forensics on this photo and see if we can work out if it matches the globe or a flat earth. First things first, uh, since Bev is super duper shy about this photo, I doubt he's gonna tell us where it was taken from. So let's try and work that out for ourselves. Now, the handy thing about an auto level is you can actually use it to measure heights and distances. And we do that by using those two horizontal lines either side of the crosshairs called stadia lines. And what you'll often see in the specs for an auto level is something called a stadia multiplication constant. And it's usually 100 to 1. And the way these things work is that you can measure the height of something between the stadia lines, uh, usually on a measuring rod. But you can just as easily use other objects of known height. Uh, and once you have that height, you can just multiply by that constant, which again is usually 100, and that will give you a pretty good estimate of your distance away from the object. So, for example, if we know the Statue of Liberty is 93 meters tall, and it happens to fit perfectly between the stadia lines of your auto level, then we simply have to multiply by 100 to get the distance. Uh, in this case, we would be 9,300 meters or 9.3 kilometers away from the statue. So from this uh, one to one relationship or 100 to one relationship, we can pretty easily derive that the angular separation between the steady lines must be 100th of a radian, uh, which is equal to 10 milliradians. Right, so how about we use Blackpool Tower as our Statue of Liberty and try to work out a distance. Now, according to Google Earth, the height above sea level for the tip of Blackpool Tower is about 160 meters, uh, but it's really difficult to make out the tip of the tower in Bev's photo. So I grabbed Kevin Jackson's image, uh, which has a better resolution and lined it up as best as I could. Pretty good. 
Right, so we can draw across to where the true tip of the tower is. Uh, and if you hover your mouse over the spire uh, of Blackpool Tower on Google Earth, it says 160 meters. Uh, so we'll go with that. Right, now let's see if we can identify the height above sea level for where the bottom stadia line is down here. Uh, so these are where those two arrows point to on the respective buildings. Uh, one of them is 33 meters and the other is 32, 33 meters. So no big deal either way. We'll just go with 33 meters. Alrighty, so now I've got all the points we need. We can do some interpolation. Uh, and if you do a straight linear interpolation between zero milliradians and five milliradians, then the tip of the tower works out to be 1.11 milliradians. Uh, if you then do a straight line uh, extrapolation, this time between 33 meters and 160 meters, uh, you can work out that the, the crosshairs shoot over Blackpool Tower at a height of 196 meters. All right, we're almost there. Uh, this makes the distance between the crosshairs and the lower stadium mark equal to 163 meters. Uh, if we want the height between both stadium lines, then we just have to double that to 326 meters. Uh, then we use the stadium multiplication constant of 100 to 1, and we get our approximate distance of 32.6 kilometers. Phew. All right, so I think we need a, a mid-game recap. So what we've learned so far, uh, one, that the top of Blackpool Tower is 1.11 milliradians below the crosshairs. Uh, two, that the lower stadia line, which is five milliradians below horizontal, hits the, the nearby buildings at around 33 meters in elevation. Uh, and three, that Bev was about 32.6 kilometers away from Blackpool Tower when he took this shot. All right, uh, but we only know a distance. We don't really know what direction he was in relative to Blackpool Tower, but we've got a few uh, visual clues in the image that we can use to get a reasonable approximation. Uh, we can line up these uh, tall sculpture things on the boardwalk with this little tower, which is a little bit inland, uh, and we can get a general idea uh, of where he was. Uh, but to get even closer, I've tried to line up this building near Blackpool uh, with the white face of this building here. Uh, and here's the coordinates for those on Google Earth. Uh, and if you trace that line of sight back about 32.6 kilometers, uh, then you will come to a place called Parbold Hill. Uh, and the land uh, just next to the road has an elevation of 390 feet. Uh, and if we add on about three feet for Bev's eye height, then we get an observer height of 393 feet, which is equal to 120 meters. Right, so at the top here is the formula for the predicted angle for the flat earth. Uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, you just take the difference in elevation between the observer and the target, divide it by the distance, uh, and then take the arc tangent of that. Uh, the formula at the bottom is for the globe. Uh, I've shown how it's derived in previous videos, so I'm not going to do it here again. Uh, if you want to incorporate refraction, which you should always do, uh, then you should use something like 7 over 6R, which is uh, 7,433 kilometers, uh, instead of the usual 6371 kilometers. So if you recall what we know about the observation, we've got a reasonably accurate observer location, which is 32.4 kilometers from Blackpool Tower uh, and an observer height of 120 meters. All right, so the two points on the image that we're gonna check against each model, are the tippy tops of these buildings, uh, which we said were 33 meters above sea level and the top of the tower up here, uh, which is 160 meters above sea level. All right, so let's plug both of those in for both models and see what we get. All right, for this lower line uh, on a flat earth, uh, the calculation should it, said it should appear at 2.69 milliradians below horizontal, which is here. Uh, on a globe, it should appear at 4.87 milliradians, which is here. 
Uh, so that's a pretty comfortable win for the globe on that one. All right, for the tippy top of the tower, uh, well, if we're on a flat earth and our observer is at 120 meters elevation and we're looking at something 160 meters tall, uh, then obviously we'd expect it to be above the crosshairs. And if you do the trick for that, it should be 1.24 milliradians above, which is up there. Uh, and on a globe, it should be 0 0.95 milliradians below the crosshairs. There. So who would have thought that the globe could make accurate predictions uh, and the flurfs can't even bring themselves to, to do a calculation? All right, so next time you see Bev, uh, please let him know how thankful we are that he took an auto level up a hill and pointed it at Blackpool Tower 30-something k's away. And apparently it's not such a stupid thing to do after all. Well, I think that is enough debunking for one day. Cheers, Ruhif. Don't forget to go and subscribe, peeps. Right, until the next one, I will see you all later. Take care.